All right, so let's look at an example, actually a couple of examples. We're gonna do these by hand, and we are also gonna look at how we can use the inference workbook because it does have pages that will do most of these calculations for us, actually. So, first example, in the parent teen cell phone survey conducted by Princeton, 800 randomly selected 16 to 17 year olds living in the US in 2010 were asked whether they have ever used their cell phone to text while driving. Of the 800 teenagers, 568 indicated that they text while driving, obtained a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of 16 to 17 year olds who text while driving. So we are looking at 800 randomly selected 16 to 17 year olds. 568 of them said that they text and drive. We want to do a 95% confidence interval. And we've been told this is a proportion. So that's helpful for us when we're in trying to figure out, am I looking at a proportion or am I looking at a mean? This told us proportion, that's always helpful. Another indication is they were asked whether they have ever used their phone to text while driving. So do you text while driving? That's a yes or no question. That means this is gonna be a proportion. If the question had been, how many times this week did you text while driving? That would not be a proportion. So because the phrasing of this question was a yes, no question, that's another indication that this was proportions. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what percent of my curve would be unshaded. So this is a 95% confidence interval. So that means 95% of that bell curve is shaded. So that leaves 5% unshaded. That 5% unshaded is my alpha. So then my other values here, I have 800 and I have 568. So 800 is my sample size and 568 is the number of kids that indicated they text and drive, number of teenagers, so that's X. It is, a, it is a number of. So then let's see, the next thing we're gonna do, I don't really have steps for this. Um, like I do the hypothesis tests and the reason why is once we get into the Excel, the Excel is going to do pretty much everything I'm doing right now. Um, so I don't really have concrete steps for this, but we want to go ahead and figure out what P hat is. So we'll call that step one. We'll find P hat. So P hat is X over N. So our X is 568 and our N is 800. So 568 over 800 is 0 0.71. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to find the Z score, that Z alpha over two. And that's a Z score of alpha over two, not Z times alpha over two. This is going to be one number. Uh, let's write it in this color. Okay, this is a single number that we're gonna get from Excel. We're not going to do any multiplying or anything like that. So we found that alpha is 5%. So then alpha divided by two would be 5% as a decimal, which is 0 0.05 over two. So that's 0 0.025. So this is what I'm gonna plug into Excel. So I'm gonna go into Excel now and I'm gonna do my norm.s.inverse 
of 0 0.025. And I believe the answer to that is going to give me negative 1.966. But I'm going to double check it just to be sure. Yes. Negative 1.96. Make sure you're rounding those numbers properly. This is not exactly what you get from Excel, but if you look at the rounding, this is what it rounds to. So then our Z score, our Z alpha over two, we're going to ignore the negative because we're gonna have one that's positive and one that's negative. So we're just going to ignore the negative now because that's going to be taken care of in the next step. So it's just going to be 1.96. You will always get a negative when you do this. You will always just ignore the negative. Just pretend it's not there. Okay, take the absolute value if you know what absolute value is. Okay, so just slap that on there. We just, we don't want that negative on there. We want to see a positive number for the Z alpha over two. So the third thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug all of this in to my confidence interval equation. Which as a reminder is P hat plus and minus that Z alpha over two that I just found times the square root of P hat times one minus P hat divided by N, that's a P. So P hat we found back in step one, 0 0.71 plus and minus, so I'm gonna do this twice the Z score is 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.71 times one minus 0 0.71 divided by our N was 800. And this is inside that square root. So let me draw this down a little further. So go ahead and do the square root first. I'm not going to write it down. Don't round the answer at all though. So I got 0 0.16042911 I'm just going to multiply that by 1.96. So now I have 0 0.71 plus and minus, and then the plus and minus, that's my margin of error. So I'll go ahead and write this down. Nope, that's a four. Four, 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 one, oh, six. So when I do the addition, that becomes what's called the upper bound. And when you do the subtraction, that's your lower bound. So this becomes 0 0.71, nope, oh my goodness. I cannot read what's on my calculator today. 7414, at this point you can go ahead and round to four decimals. 0 0.71 minus all of that. And this is 0 0.6786. So those first three spots that steps that we just did there, I'm gonna move this example down further, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna insert a page in front of that. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought I would have enough room and I did not. 
So this, what we've done so far, find p hat, find the z score, find these upper and lower bounds. Excel is going to do all of this for us, which is why I was like, I don't really have steps for this because Excel's going to do all of this. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Excel now. And then there's going to be one more step after this. And um, that's going to be the most important step for these. So here's our Excel document that we've been working with. So here are the two hypothesis testing pages. If you scroll over one more after the hypothesis testing for means, you'll see confidence intervals for proportions. And there are three things you have to fill in. X, N, and the confidence level, which is the percent of your curve that is shaded. So this guy is your confidence level. What is the middle something percent that we're looking at? And you have to enter that number as a decimal. If you enter 95%, you're going to get an error. So we have... There we go. 568 students texting and driving, 800 students surveyed, and it's the same number, but I'm just going to enter it in again, 0.95. So P hat, our critical value, and our upper and our lower bounds. Our lower bound 0.6786 and our upper bound 0.7414. Those answers match. All this work we just did, Excel did for us. So what we just did, all of this, was how to calculate this by hand. If you're asked to do it by hand, this is what you need to do. If you're not asked to do it by hand, you can use this Excel workbook. Regardless of whether you're asked to do it by hand or not by hand, the last thing you need to do to any confidence interval is to interpret the interval. Always have to interpret it. If you just give me two numbers, I'm going to look at it and I'm going to be like, what are these numbers? They're just numbers floating around in the world. So our interpretation, this is a standard interpretation that you can use. It is the same one that I use all the time. There are slight variations to this that you might see, but they all pretty much follow the same general phrasing. So we want to start by restating how confident we are. So we are 95% confident. So that lets any statistician know what middle percent of our curve we were looking at. This lets a non-statistician know, hey, they're super confident in this answer. Cool. So we are 95% confident that what were we looking at? I don't want to see the word it. I don't want to see confident that it is between. I don't want to see any of that. I want to see specifics in these interpretations. So the proportion of 16 to 17 year olds that text while driving is between 0 0.6786 and 0 0.7414. That is not a 4. That's a 7. Let's, that needs to be a 4. Why won't you erase? So I've restated how confident I was, I gave some information about what it is I was looking at, and I gave the interval. Some variations you might see is, you might see here the true proportion 
or the population proportion. You could also phrase this as percentage. That's fine. If you use percentage, then you would write this as 67.86%, 74.14%. If we think about wanting to keep these super simple so that I could give this to anybody and they could understand this, people don't like the word proportions and people don't really like seeing decimals. So percentage and actual percentages are gonna be more friendly to the general population. So that's the first example. And then I have another example, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a separate video for that one. So there you go, first example on how to do a confidence interval.